shorts and a bright t-shirt that struggles with purple colors. Um, okay, so first, uh, the Toronto Disability Pride March is coming up um, on July 13th. We hope you could join us. You can find the information on social media at Toronto Disability Pride March and at tgtm.org. So uh, I was asked to be a speaker last minute, so please bear with me. This was written last night. Um, as someone on OVSP who lives under these systems every day, as many of you do, I am here to speak from lived experience. I am one of the most privileged in my position. I have no language barriers, I am a citizen, I am capable of university level writing when I want to. <laughs> I have a primary position and I'm deeply embedded in the and shared knowledge of the CBD. Yet I had and continue to have very little hope for the CBD. There's a band-aid solution and frankly a bad one. The CBD is maxed $2,400 a year. It is long capable of what be done by primary physicians in a system with a primary physician shortage. It is travel and paperwork costs. I can say with confidence that this benefit will probably only reach the most privileged, privileged of us and will not end the poverty that is killing us. I fought for years for the province to deem me disabled for ODSP. The mountain of paperwork and a tribunal with the person in the long road in food age. Yet despite being deemed disabled provincially, and all my relative privilege, I have yet to send, uh, I've had to send the disability tax credit paperwork back twice already. This federal tax credit is mandatory to get the CBD. I have connected with many of our elders who have fought for these pieces of legislation, the CBD and the AODA alike, and feel nothing but gratitude. They have fought endlessly to improve conditions for the next generation, and watch their works either be watered down or reduced. We have to be loud in saying all of us are none of us. We have watched as our PSWs come less often. We have watched us be moved into care homes and affordable housing that moves like prisons. We have watched the continued normalization of our segregation. We have watched our friends be carried out in body bags. We have watched our great people choose made. Poverty is a matter of life and death. And contrary to ne neoliberal teachings, legislative poverty is the single greatest social determinant of health. Poverty is not accidental and neither is the loss of our lives. No privilege for a few while we leave the most marginalized behind. I will not pretend to have hope for the government actually giving a shit about our conditions, but I have hope in our community. I have hope that we will call out their bullshit until someone gives a shit. I have hope that our elders are teaching those of us coming up how to organize, how to survive, how to unlearn not just the ableism, but its colonial roots. I have hope that we will learn about and from the most vulnerable amongst us. Learn about the interlocking roots of all oppressions created to reinforce each other and see that understanding as the key to our collective liberation, not a distraction from them. Freedom for Crips means freedom for Palestine, Congo, Sudan, and Haiti. Freedom for Crips means harm reduction and free supply. Freedom for Crips means indigenous sovereignty and land back on Turtle Island. It means fighting for trans lives. It means abolishing the police, prison, shelter, care home, and social work industries. Freedom for Crips means collective liberation because only the collective can free us. I'm just going to stay here because our next participant is an amazing singer songwriter who also is the co chair of OVNC Action. But I don't need to. It's just we're streaming it to DJ and us. Yeah, you gotta leave it. Up. Yeah. You can just leave it. Okay. I would. I would yeah. like that. Wow. Okay. I can oh my go god. Back You're in. so nice. Um, so, hi everybody. What is it going there? Come on. It's okay. You can say hi. 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 Oh All right. God. You're so smart. So um, so I'm really uh proud to be here 
I'm glad that um, that we are getting something, even though it's not enough. Um, and it's not going to lift us out of poverty, um, but um, it is it is something. Um, so, um, so the two songs. Hold on. So the first song that I decided to play for you is kind of a um, is a is a is a debut, um, and uh, and I I just um, decided to play it because it's a little bit more appropriate than uh, songs that are not about you know um, protesting or anything. So this song is called "Causing a Fuss." It's getting like a live, like a. Rebel rousing and causing a fuss. Rebel rousing and causing a fuss. They won't give enough cash to us to wear. Rebel rousing and causing a fuss. We can't afford to pay our rent. We can't afford to eat. We're scratching at the surface. We're climbing all the walls. We're we, uh, standing in line. But if we break, no apologies at all. Rebel rousing and causing fuss. Rebel rousing and causing fuss. They won't give enough cash to us to wear. Rebel rousing and causing fuss. Rebel rousing and causing fuss. Please. Have stood for courting friends and to give us better lives. We um, wrote so many letters. We've been so polite. We have stood for press and played the nicest of the games. And we're demanding that you break yourselves out of these chains. Rebel rousing and causing a fuss. Rebel rousing and causing a fuss. But they won't, they won't give enough cash to us to wear. Rebel rousing and causing a fuss. Rebel rousing and causing a fuss. Thank you. Oh, that was fun. Woo! Okay. Woo! <laughs> okay. So this <laughs> this next song is called "Raise the Rates." Yay! Yeah, because that's what you want them to do. So here we go. You give the finger to the poor You say the you refuse to work Glad that the purple world has filled your cup But you want to be sorry if you don't smarten up Um, 
Now I forgot the second verse. Um, Okay, hold on. Um, the corporate world will shed on you the cold and ugly. They will use anything to prop them up. But you're gonna be sorry if you don't smarten up. Oh, you're gonna be sorry if you don't smarten up. Raise the rate. And we can buy our own raise the rates And we can fix our eyes, raise the rates And we can pay our own and raise the rates We're tired of your eyes Corporate world will shit, shit on you. They're cold and lovely. They will use anything to prop them up. But you wanna be sorry if you don't smarten up. Oh, you're gonna be sorry if you don't smarten up. Oh, you're gonna be sorry if you don't smarten up. Thank you. He's worried he's dead. Say that again. He's worried he's dead. 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 Capella performance! Fantastic! This is the community. This is how we celebrate. This is us. So I have three more speakers and I will invite now Jenny to uh, join us because it is important to have every segment of the population represented and Jenny is the uh, Vice President of Events and Outreach for APUS, the Association of Part-Time Undergraduate Students of the University of Toronto. Jenny? Thanks, it's great to see everybody here today for this very important issue. My name is Jennifer, or Jenny, or Jen, and I use she, her pronouns. I'll just briefly describe myself. I'm a white woman, short, I've got glasses, I've got a blue tank top, black shorts, and a blue sun hat and brown hair. And uh, I'm, just as Janet, Janet said, I'm the Vice President of Events and Outreach at the Association for Part-Time Undergraduate Students at the University of Toronto. But I'm also a student and a person with multiple disabilities. So I'll speak with a triple identity today as a student union representative as, and as someone with skin in the game with the CDB and ODSB uh, as a person and a student with a disability. I sincerely thank the rally organizers for inviting me to speak to you today. It's a great honor. Uh, so we've gathered here today to continue to pressure the government to pass their not exclusionary regulations uh, for the Canada Disability Benefit or the CDB to prevent clawbacks, which I'll say more about later, and to increase, increase the proposed rate well beyond the maximum of $200 per month. These measures are essential to ensure that students and people with disabilities are able to freely pursue work, studies, and basic living without worrying about financial burdens. Disabled students and disabled community members deserve better. The CDB is long overdue. It's a long overdue victory achieved as a result of ongoing organizing from tireless organizers and organizations such as Disability Without Poverty, who's so amazing here today, the ODSP Action Coalition, my mothership, 
uh, Disability Justice Network of Ontario, Income Security and Advocacy Network, Forest, Forehead Kiss to you guys, and uh, the Ontario Disability Coalition, and so many other national and provincial groups. Yay! Well, it's here at the end. That's just organizing and getting us all to speak with one voice. Despite this progress, we recognize that we still have a long way to go. Uh, disabled people and students face, uh, continue to face disproportionate challenges uh, such as food insecurity, houselessness, and systemic barriers to post-secondary education while struggling to survive and meet their basic needs. APIS represents many students with disabilities. We firmly stand in solidarity with students and people with disabilities. As students, can we continue to advocate and organize collectively alongside all of you, led by all of you, and guided by you, until dis disabled people are provided adequate social support, resources, and opportunities in a manner that gives each person autonomy, options, and choices to become the person they want to be. Yay! <laughs> we oppose the province clawing back uh, federal benefits and other sources of supplementary income for people with disabilities, such as the Canada, Canada Emergency Response Benefit, the Canada Emergency Student Benefit, uh, the suite of Canada uh, Student Grants, and now potentially the Canada Disability Benefit. Shame, shame indeed, shame indeed. We also uh, oppose the federal government ignoring that provinces claw back income that was intended to go to the disabled person. Yay. Shame. Uh, we know those clawbacks are paradoxically driving students to quit their efforts to get a post-secondary education, which already is uh, which already mires students with disabilities in red tape and inadequate funding to get even minimal accommodations. The existence of one support social support program is not an opportunity to reduce another but rather an opportunity for the province and the federal governments to work together to bring those relying on social support programs above the poverty line. We also reject narrow definitions and excessive bureaucracy, like the disability tax credit, that unnecessarily excludes the majority of people with disabilities from essential federal and provincial supports, like the, shame indeed, yes, like the RDSP, dental benefits, and now it looks like the CDB. We will help promote and support the next challenge in the creation of the CDB based on all the hard work people here are doing. Uh, where the disabilities are called, people with disabilities are again called on to give the government instructions, not feedback, instructions on the regulations which will lock in who can access the CDB and how much they will get. We continue to reject systems that keep disabled people in poverty, that put them in precarious conditions that threaten or destroy their quality of life. We firmly believe that people and students with disabilities need adequate funding and support to afford their basic needs with the continuous financial burden of the high cost of living and ever increasing tuition fees. We will continue to build on the momentum of grassroots organizing like we've got right here and to build on the victory of creating the CDB. We demand access to appropriate and sufficient support for people with disabilities. We demand the elimination of all clawbacks. We demand income adequacy in federal and provincial income support programs. We will work together to ensure people can meet their needs and pursue their interests, passions, and aspirations. We know more victories will happen uh, we, as we continue to organize together to replace retrograde policies and attitudes with humane programs and exciting opportunities for folks with disabilities. Actions like we're doing here today will bring about a just world and allow happier and more fulfilling lives for the generations to come. And I'm going to ask if folks want to join in a chant here. I'm going to start us on a chant. It's going to be, we know this because the people united will never be defeated. 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 One more. People united will never be defeated. Thank you so much.
Iron Man Batman out onto the drainage. The Canadian Disability Disabilities Act is also the Disabilities in Canada. Actually, Seniors Disabled in Canada. That's fantastic. My dear friend, can I ask your name? Douglas Hines. Douglas Hines. Douglas Hines has, uh, for those who, who didn't hear before, he gave us a rendition of uh, Less Worried. Okay, be happy. Yes. Be worried he's deadly. Be worried he's deadly. We need to record. We need to find somebody to record that, actually. You put it on the radio. All right. Okay, so the next speaker uh, is Ron Anisi. And Ron is a member of the Disability Action Coalition and one of the organizers of today's March. Ron, the floor is yours. Uh, hey everyone, I'm Ron. I am a, I'm a member of the ODSP Action Coalition. I'm also the co-chair of the Raise the Rates Coalition, which hopefully you're going to be hearing more about in the coming months. Uh, I'm also an ODSP recipient, and I want to spend some time today uh, telling you about what our lives as recipients are like and what the Canada Disability Benefit meant to us. What we mean by legislated poverty is that we are forced to live on $1,300 a month. It all goes to pay our exorbitant rents and utilities and maybe food, maybe medical expenses, maybe transportation, definitely nothing else. Frankly, many of us can rarely afford to leave our homes. It makes organizing events like this a real challenge uh, because we know that many people in our community can't even afford the TTC fare to get here. 70%, yeah, tell me, tell me about it. Um, 70% of ODSP recipients are living in private market rentals. Even accommodation that our government has the audacity to call affordable is completely out of our reach. And despite this, 30% of tenants in Ontario are social assistance recipients. It is beyond challenging to pay for a $2,500 a month average market rent when your shelter allowance is $565 a month. The fact the fact is that in this province and across this country, social assistance recipients are overrepresented in poverty. We're overrepresented as food bank clients. The situation is so bad that in 2022, many of the 13,000 Canadians who chose to end their lives by medical assistance in dying were poor or homeless or veterans or people with disabilities or in some cases, a few of those at a time. We know that food banks and programs like MAID are now being used as a replacement for adequate social assistance. So, three years ago, when the federal government proposed a Canada disability benefit that would lift one and a half million people with disabilities out of poverty, we became hopeful that we would all see significant change in our lives. When the bill to create the benefit passed unanimously in Parliament with the full support of all parties, we began to see a light at the end of the tunnel. Sadly, the benefit that Christa Freeland announced in her recent federal budget speech left Canadians with disabilities with absolutely no doubt that the promises made by the government would not be fulfilled. The Canada Disability Benefit will not lift a single Canadian with disabilities out of poverty. Not a single one of us. Uh, even if the amounts were adequate, there's still a serious problem with the eligibility criteria. They've chosen to use the disability tax credit to determine eligibility. They say that this is the fastest way to deliver this benefit, but if you ask me, this is the fastest way for the government to fail to meet its objectives. Almost no social assistance recipients have applied for the tax credit because it favors people who have income from employment, which most ODSP recipients, 90% in fact, do not have. So again, like with the new federal pharma care and dental care programs, the Canada Disability Benefit will simply not reach many of the people who need it the most. It's really a question of priorities. The Canada Disability Benefit was allocated $6 billion over four years. Which, you know, it's a victory. We asked for this. Um, despite the fact that the benefit was announced a year before the conflict in the Ukraine began, our government has already promised, delivered the Ukraine over $8 billion in aid. 
And in this budget, we had over $8 billion in new military spending. The reality is that our government would rather spend our tax dollars on killing people overseas than on keeping Canadians alive. And don't get me started on the corporate welfare system, which guarantees foreign corporations countless billions of our tax dollars while excluding Canadians who continue to live more and more difficult lives. It's almost, as, it's almost as though you can't trust a bunch of people who give a standing ovation to a Nazi. Um, I want to apologize for coming here with such a bleak message. I'm all often considered to be a cynic when it comes to issues like this. Uh, but I don't believe I am a cynic because I've always believed that a better world is possible. We can make our world better by doing what we're doing here today, by coming together and speaking out, by letting the powers be know that we're still out here fighting and we're not going anywhere. But mostly we need to stop voting for people and parties that do not represent our interests. The one thing I'm most sure of is that a government that is not responsive to the needs of the people simply cannot and should not survive. So we'll continue to fight for the things that improve our lives. We'll continue to demand change and we'll continue our fight until Canadians with disabilities no longer have to live in the extreme poverty that they do today. And we're going to win this one, especially that last one. We're going to win. Thank you very much. We're up to our last speaker. They say we say the best for last, so Brad is the new executive director of Disability Justice Network Ontario and he's going to introduce himself. Take it away, Brad. Woo! All right. Hello, folks! Woo! How's everybody doing today? Woo! Solid, solid. So, folks, my name is uh, Brad Eboy. I'm a member of the uh, Halibut Mi'kmaq Nation. I'm originally from Western Newfoundland. I've been uh, living around uh, Ontario in a bunch of different cities over across the last uh, 10 years. And, uh, you know, I have multiple disabilities, cerebral palsy, low vision, so on. And, um, you know, I, I guess I just wanted to start by saying uh, it's really great to see all of you here. It's great to come together as a community. And, uh, yeah, and as mentioned, I'm the new uh, executive director at uh, Disability Justice Network of Ontario, working with some amazing Woo! folks, some of whom are here today. So, really excited to uh, keep on working with everybody. So, throughout this little speech that I've got going, my notes here, I'm going to be uh, doing a bit of a call and response chant, if folks are interested. Woo! So, when I say, when we fight... I want you to say, we will win. So let's try that. When we fight, we will win. When we fight, we will win. When we fight, we will win. Sick. That's great, folks. All right. So, you know, before starting at uh, DJNO, I was in the legal clinic system. And, you know, something that we heard a lot from folks across the city here in Toronto was about the terrifying and terrible bureaucracy of uh, the Ontario Disability Support Program, uh, ODSP. And in particular, how doctors in this very city overcharge for medical tests and contradict the lived experiences of racialized disabled folks. People again and again are subjected with high costs, countless appeals, and frankly, loads and loads of bullshit. Woo! And you know, we would hope that the federal government would learn from the mistakes of their provincial counterparts. And I think you know already where this is going, because you've heard from everyone so far. But instead, what have we gotten? We've gotten a benefit that relies on the incredibly high barriers to keep disabled people from getting what we deserve. The, Can the Canada Disability Benefit requires us first to qualify for the uh, disability tax credit, and the DTC requires, like ODSP, the reliance on the goodwill of doctors to listen and engage 
with disabled people. And while we have our allies, not everyone is. We know that there are doctors who are unwilling to work with working class, racialized, disabled people here in this city and all across this province. And we know that the appeal systems and broader systems in place in this province are horrifying. Shame. Shame, exactly. But you know what, folks? When we fight, we will win. When we fight, we will win. When we fight, we will win. Exactly, and we have to fight. And we have to fight now, both against the systems that this province has constructed, but also the systems that are being built around this federal benefit. You know, when I worked at that legal clinic, we heard a lot from black and indigenous disabled folks, as I mentioned, about being overcharged for medical tests, for applications and later appeals that these sorts of systems rely on across the province. And similarly at DJNO, we've long supported community members who face outright racist and ableist discrimination from all parts of our system. And this too is the basis of how we access that tax credit. This is how the system is built to work. Thankfully, we have a little bit more time to influence how some of this comes together. We have time to push for better, but we need to act now. We need to fight. And if we fight, if we fight, if we fight, we will win. All right. And folks, in particular, indigenous disabled folks are going to be hit hardest by some of the issues that we know will come with the CDB due to its reliance on the tax credit. We know that our communities are affected by medical discrimination to even get in the door. We know that there is constant bureaucracy around the tax system that just enacts the very colonial systemic disablement that is at the core of the Canadian state. This benefit, this limited $200 benefit per month will not get in the broader set of hands that need it. And you know what? We need to fight, and we need to fight now. And if we fight, we will win. If we fight, we will win. All right. And friends, while we deal with this colonial discrimination at home, we know that this government has money to do better because they spend it instead on colonial coups and imperial ambitions supported by politicians like Christian Freeland. Exactly, my friends, exactly. While people here scrape by, this country aids in the genocide of disabled people all over the world. As is the case with countless disabled Palestinians in Gaza with weapons built and funded here in this country. And we have to resist it together, my friends, because if we fight, we will win. If we fight, we will win. If we fight, we will win. So friends, if we believe in disability justice, really and truly believe in disability justice, we need to fight for better here, yes, but we need to unite our struggles with disabled Gazans and disabled people around the world. Every penny put into supporting our people here prevents one more cent from killing our siblings abroad. So for these reasons, everything that you've heard here today from everyone who's gathered here, we need a Canada disability benefit that works for working class, indigenous, black, and all disabled people. This fight hasn't begun today, and it certainly won't end today. But if we fight, we will win. If we fight, we will win. I want to make sure that everybody hears it, every member of parliament, everyone with the province, if we fight, we will win. Thank you. Now that we have the crowd riled up, we have to say so long because I'm really hoping 
that every single one of you, plus a friend or two, to uh, come to the Toronto Disability Pride March on Saturday, July 14, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, Saturday, July 13 at Queen's Park. And I don't have my, my, my dates together. Before we go, we want to invite Kevin. Come on over. He has an important message for all of us. Hi, hi, my name is Kevin Johnhead. How are you doing? So, so Kevin, Kevin's OSP, it's, it's not enough. Yes. I get, I get, I get $60. I, I get $60 for coach fees and $10 for, for laundry. I'm not. I'm not happy. I'm not happy about it. Can you repeat that one more time? I get. I get. I, I get three twenties. I get three twenties. Or can you repeat what you said? Sixty dollars for coach fees. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it is. It is. It is. For, it is for Shane. Yes. Shane. I get. I get three twenties and one ten dollars for 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 no, 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 laundry. It's it's not enough. It's not enough. No, no, no. Not enough. Not enough. Not enough. Not enough. Not enough. Three twenties. Yeah. Three twenties. Three three twenties. Sixty sixty dollars for for yeah coach weeks and one ten dollars for long laundry yeah laundry. I'm not, I'm not, it's, it's, it's free 20s. It's, it's six, $60, 60, $60. Shame, shame. 60, yeah, 60, yeah, $60. I, I need help, yeah, I need help. I need help, okay? Yeah, yes, yes. I, 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 I want, I want more, more. Money. Yeah. Yes. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. All right. All right. Take care. All right. Take care. Bye. Thank you so much, Kevin. This are this is the reality of our families, our friends, our coworkers. So again. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. I want to thank, thank Tim and Martin, the ASL interpreters. I want to thank all of the volunteers, David, Jenny, Tania, Kevin, and of course all the organizations that put their love and efforts to make this a reality, Disability Justice Network. Uh, Isaac always forget what is it for, in comes support, security advocate center. Thank you, I made it. And disability without poverty, and of course, uh, the main instigator, ODSB Action Coalition. If you're not a member, please check them out. They meet regularly every other week in a very uh, accessible way every other week, so please, Come to the march on Saturday, July 13 at Queen's Park at 1 p.m. 1 to 5. 1 to 5, because after the march uh, there at Grange Park, there's going to be a celebration post-march. So thank you. Make sure you pick up your garbage and uh, stay. I have somebody here who wants to say something. Uh, we were going to do that. Thank you for reminding me. Thank you. I don't have my notes and my brain goes out the window. The idea was to walk to her office like we did last year on June, but in the month of July, everybody just flies away because it's the holiday. 
We have had no response from their office. I don't want to make people cross the street twice. There's a hazard, there's construction. And I think that uh, we can always send virtual messages. Uh, you, I really love your, your postcard, your, 